Whoops. All right. Uh, so we've got a continuous probability density function here, and it says to find the value of a, and we know that uh, a must make the integral of this function, this little quadratic. Uh, the area needs to be 1. So let's go over to our y equals here. We're going to type in this function, x, x minus 4. And the window will set to be 0 to 4. And because this function is, has a positive x squared right there, that means the function will be going up. So I need some negative values. So this actually should be fine. That's pretty good. I'll grab a little bit more on those y's. Let's go negative 5. OK. So now. We want to go second calc, go down to integral, which is number 7. And then I'm going to type in 0, enter, 4, enter. That will find the integral from 0 to 4. And then I'm going to store it. Just push this STO button, store in A. And I should have, do a little test here, should have A is that. Okay, Let's see if I can do a fraction from that. I'm not sure if I can. Nice. All right, so there's a fraction there. So what am I going to multiply? This is the area. What am I going to multiply this area by so that the area is 1? Well, it should be obvious that you're going to multiply by negative 3 over 32. Just do the uh, reciprocal. So now I'm going to go up to Y. I'm going to insert negative 3 over 32. There's my function. Let's push graph. Doesn't look as nice. Let's change the scale from like negative 1 to 1. Okay, so there's our new function. Let's go find the integral, which is 7. Type in 0 to 4, and it's 1. Perfect. So now it's a proper probability density function. Area is 1 underneath the curve on the domain that's given. So now it says to find the expected value. The expected value formula is x times f of x, the integral of x times f of x. So I think just click math, go down until you see integral or int There it is. 0, 4, x. f of x is in y1. So go and click y1. You go to vars, y vars, function. And there it is there. Just push enter. So that's x times f of x and dx. And we'll store that in b. 2. Expected value is 2. I don't think I needed to store that. It's an easy one to remember. All right, so now find the variance. To find the variance, we need to go math and click up to go to integral, which is number 9. Formula for uh, variance is x squared f of x, so vars, y vars, function, y1, dx, minus the expected value squared, which is 2, so 2 squared is 4, so minus 4. Or you can just type in this whole thing again and square it, but the answer is 2 and you square it as 4, and I get 0.8. So the variance is 0.8. Now it says to find the probability of x is greater than 2. So to do that, I can just go to graph, and I can go, uh, actually, if I, I don't want all that black, so if I turn this on, off, and then on again, it should graph it for me all fresh. So now it says find the probability of x greater than 2. So let's go second calc integral number seven 
greater than 2, but since 2 is an infinitely thin line, I just have to go from 2. So I don't have to do greater than 2 in the continuous probability. It doesn't really uh, mean very much. So let's go 2 to 4. That's 0.5. Store that. I don't need to store it, but let's just store it anyway. Store it in C. Enter. Now it says to find the probability of greater than 3 given greater than 2. So my denominator, just pretend this vertical line is like a denominator. My denominator is the probability of greater than 2. We know the probability greater than 2 is 0.5. So let's go find out what the probability greater than 3 is given it's greater than 2. Second, actually I can just do this. Math, 9 for integral, 3 to 4 of bars, y bars, function y1, dx, so that's the probability 3 to 4, but it says given greater than 2, so we need to divide greater than 2, and then that's either in C or you can just type in uh, 0.5. So the probability of x greater than 3, given that you know it's greater than 2, is 0.3125.